One of the variables you're going to encounter with rimfire ammunition is rim thickness and rim thickness variation. Now, how is that measured? Let's find out. Hey guys, Gavin Gear and Kyle Shields here from UltimateReloader.com. Hey, it's kind of fun to team up with you on this story. Yeah, it's been a minute. <laughs> Yeah, so one of the things I really enjoy doing is shooting rimfire. And of course, being Gavin Gear, what am I all about? I'm all about trying to shoot tiny groups or hit some crazy targets at distance, right? Like we did the 511. Yeah, oh yeah, Fire, shoot yeah. Was... 500, 511 yards, and that was about a year ago. Actually, we're coming That's up crazy. on 511 again. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. That I'm is blessed. ELR, trust me. We had to do drop scale factor. Uh, we had to work our way out, and ultimately it was seeing a miss on a sandy rock surface, seeing that tiny puff of dust that gave us the offset between where we were landing and getting on target. That was really a great feeling. I bet, that's challenging. Yeah. My rim fire is way, <laughs> way limit, more limited than that, shooting 50 to 100 yards at a range on some paper. Right. And challenging friends, like well, great great newcomer. Most cartridge. kids, yeah, I started with a Ruger 1022. That, that's what I still have today. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, great. I, good fun, right? So regardless of the skew of ammo, there's, there's gonna be something that you can do with it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when we've gone to shoot really tight groups, we typically shoot at 50 yards to really get a good group size, right? And then we'll all go out to 100, maybe 200, and see, you know, how the groups are going to vary, and you know what that drop scale factor is, yep. and some of those other things. And what I've found is sometimes a particular brand of ammo, type of ammo, even a lot of ammo, can show really favorable results in one rimfire rifle, but not as favorable in another. That's right. It's trial and error. Yeah, Usually. so a lot of guys will do this. They'll work through lots of ammo. When they find one, they'll try and buy it up because they're a competitor to, you know, 22 Benchrest kind of convention or, you know, yeah. like 20, NRL 22 kind of thing or whatever. Even different lots have different variations. A yes. lot of people found a certain lot. When I was doing a bunch of research for this, it would shoot really well and they would try yep. to buy up as much as they could. So, exactly. Hoarding is just a thing in our industry and in our community. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> so, sometimes you'll get uh, results that you don't expect, but usually, if I run a few premium SKUs of ammo through a particular really high end rimfire rifle, I'll find something that's going to work and work really well. So, uh, one of the things that we haven't played with, however, is this whole notion of measuring rim thickness, either the actual absolute thickness, like the average thickness of the rim for a particular brand or skew of ammo, and then there's also the variation. How consistent is the thickness of the rim? That's right. Yeah, and that's where Hornady has this rimfire thickness gauge, which you can get mm -hmm. at Mid-South, by the way, too. There are others out there as well. This is probably one of the most common ones you'll run across. So. Yeah, we wanted to answer that, and I also wanted to do some research as well and figure out from other people, is this something that equals to anything? Is it yeah. something that's important? So we can get in that in a minute here, but we wanted to try multiple types, and not really SKUs or different lots, but just multiple types of ammo, ranging from the yep. budget to the higher end. So Yeah, we got a couple budget SKUs, the Remington yep. Golden Bullets, the Federal Game Shock, uh, and then a few high-end SKUs as well. Mm -hmm. Lapua Super Long Range, RWS R50, Lapua Center X. Do you like how I said that authentically? Yeah, yeah. Lapua, Lapua. right? Lapua. It's not Lapua, but <laughs> say it how you will. It doesn't matter. Each their own, you know. <laughs> there, there's one brand we don't have around here, which is Ely, and I might be mm -hmm. pronouncing that one wrong. I, I kept no, saying that. No, that's right. Online. Okay, cool. Yep, yep. I did some research. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that was another common one I, I saw online that people tend to like. So we, we don't have it here. I mean, we do want to keep it limited. There's there's a lot of testing here, so we just stuck with these and with what we had. But these are these are great. All these Lapua ones are great. We've had great results with them in the yep. past, so I'm sure it's close enough, you know? So you were the guy on point to do the measurements. Do you right. want to uh, show our audience how this tool works? Sure, we will do. Awesome. All right, so we're going to give a demo here of how this rimfire thickness gauge works. But first, what is included? So in the kit, you'll get a lanyard, which why you want to use that is if you're hand holding this with calipers and, the, and measuring and everything, if you drop it, it can set off around if you if you let it hit the floor. So you don't want to do that. In our case, since we were holding this in a vice pretty mm -hmm. securely, I was pretty confident in that. I decided to forego the lanyard. <laughs> just it had been in the way, so it's still detached here. Yep. Uh, then you get two of the rim thickness bushings. Uh, one for 17. Okay. Like 17 HMR. 17 HMR, yeah. and the other rim fires, and then you get the 22 LR. So which nice. is obviously what we used here. 
you get an anvil and then you get the body portion and of course some screws. Now you will need to bring your own calipers, whether they're mm -hmm. dial or digital, doesn't matter, whichever you prefer, mm -hmm. but you will need to have your own calipers of your choice, in our case, Mitch Toyo, which is mm -hmm. the go-to. So it's how do you stuff. eat good <laughs> stuff? It's awesome, I have some too. Um, and how you use it is really straightforward. You wanna basically screw on your body and your anvil to the calipers. Uh, Hornady recommends that you use the anvil on the traveling blades. Um, I usually like mine reverse, Gavin does too, but uh, <laughs> you know, however you prefer, but you wanna install your uh, headspace gauge itself. So once you get all that secured and making sure that there are no gaps in between everything and everything's square, you can just zero out your calipers. Now let's By the way, you did say it. headspace gauge. Headspa oh. Rim thickness gauge. Rim thickness gauge. Ah. I guess it is kind of headspace in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, once you get everything nice and, and uh, squared off, you just want to zero it out like so. So that way everything is... It's a direct reading of the rim thickness. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So and that's how I operated it the whole time. You could mm -hmm. use an overall length for the whole thing if you want, mm -hmm. however, however you want to use it. Yep. But it's as simple as just feeding in around here, like so, dropping in and then measuring. So these are the Lapua super long ranges. I'm getting 0 0.0390, which is about in line with what I was getting for mm -hmm. the other rim thicknesses with the Lapuas mm -hmm. and some of the others. It, it varies. I was seeing anywhere from 0 0.0390 mm -hmm. to 0 0.04 or something, you know, any, yeah. anywhere in that range, sometimes 405, things like that. Yeah, so, yeah. Within about a thousandth and a half. Basically, yep. a thousand and a half swing on, on all of these. So, yep. But what you're looking for most is the consistency between mm -hmm. each of your skews or ammo. So the, the rimfire thickness itself might determine with mm -hmm. how your rifle likes the ammo or not. So the actual thickness, the headspace, doesn't matter as much, mm -hmm. it seems, so from what I found out. Nice. Okay. So now that we've talked about how it's put together, how it's used, let's look at the data. So here we are in Google Sheets. I love myself a good spreadsheet. Me too. <laughs> oh yeah. And so how many samples did you do for each of these? Did 20. Okay, that's statistically significant. Brian Litz is uh, proud of you. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like we're between about 38,000 and 39 and a half to about 40 if you if you round that up because yep. this is just an average number here beyond right. the resolution of, of the digital calipers, right? That's right. So we're talking about less than two thousandths of an inch difference between these averages. And uh, you know, it's it, how big of a factor is the absolute thickness of the rim? That's actually a good question, right? If you have ideas on that, please drop that uh, in the comments. The other interesting number to look at is the consistency of the rim thickness, right? So if we look at total variation, here, is that the, that was the standard deviation actually? Yes. Okay, so it's not the extreme spread, it's the SD. Right. right. Um, surprise. Mm -hmm. This is a surprise. It, if we look is. at the tightest number, it's for federal game shock. So yep. whatever they're doing, they have a pretty tight control over that. Yeah, you said you had shot some of those a while back, had good results from what you're remembering. Yeah. So that's, yep. that, that's, that's in line with it. It's consistent, it's about four ten thousandths of an inch. Okay, yeah. And then, the largest variation that we see here is about eight ten thousandths of an inch, almost a, a full thousandth of an inch. And that was for the Remington Gold Bullets, right? And right, those. those, I do know, do not shoot as well, right? This is kind of more of an economical mm -hmm. skew, that kind of thing. And then, you know, if we look in the middle, we have five tenths, four tenths, four tenths, you know, fairly consistent between RWS, Lapua Center X, and Federal Game Shock. Lapo is super long range, a little bit more. Again, the big question is, does it matter? Yeah, does it matter? And you also got human variable when you're measuring with calipers sure. anyway. I tried to say as consistent as possible, but keep that in mind as well. You know, consistent pressure, just like yep. you're measuring overall length or your headspace for your rimfire stuff. So. Actually, it's a really good point because that that set of digital calipers is only supposed to be accurate how close the average measured value is to the actual value within one thousandth of an inch. Right. And the resolution what the minimal change that's picked up by the display is a half of a thousandth. And these numbers are tiny. You so really small. <laughs> we're almost in that measurement error range here, mm -hmm. right? 
And this is more consistent, actually, than I thought it was going to be. It, I was, yeah, I was surprised, actually. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd see a lot more variance in between each type mm -hmm. of ammo. And of course, as you get to the higher end stuff, it's much tighter and much yeah. more consistent. But it almost gets like, after a while, you, you measure something, you're like, oh, here's what I expect. Yeah, okay, another, <laughs> another consistent number. Just it all kept adding up to be almost the same until we got to the, the yep. golden bullets there. So, which, that's not a surprise. Those aren't meant to be match grade. Right. It's not match grade ammo, which is fine. You get what you pay for. But yeah. if you're serious, you definitely want to step up to the higher end lots and yep. higher end ammo for sure. Yep. I'm seeing so. So there's two kinds of people out there. I know you guys. There's the guys that just want to measure this just to know because mm -hmm. it might make you feel better, right? Right. And then there's the guys that are going to use this data in a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. Both are valid, yep. right? Sometimes I like to do certain things that make me feel good and that's a valid use of my time. Other times, it is a little bit more mission critical. And if you're gonna shoot in a match and rim thickness is an important variable for you, I'd say this is a great tool to use. Mm -hmm. And regardless of whether you wanna buy the tool or the ammo, Mid-South has it all. So if you click on that first link in the video description and go over to the article, we'll have links to their full collection at Mid-South of the rimfire ammo and then also the Hornady tool. But again, our question, what do you think? Have you seen a meaningful correlation between rim thickness, rim thickness consistency, and what you're seeing on target? Or even the velocity, because the rim is really where the primer compound is. That's right, yeah. So maybe maybe there's more here to this that we don't even understand yet. Yeah, you know? and I'm curious if any of you, if you do sort your ammo, do you weigh it? Do you, do you use the rim mm -hmm. thickness or anything else? I've seen a handful of different methods out there that people swear by or some, none at all. They just yeah. don't mess around to get good stuff and they are on their way. So I'm curious what everyone does really. So yes, drop a comment and we'll join you down there in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching Ultimate Reloader on TV and wanna take advantage of free resources, exclusives and hot deals, just hold your camera phone up to the QR code, tap on the link, Fill out the information, boom, you're getting ultimate reloader emails. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. Thanks again for watching.